So good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Uh, my name is Carlos Menchaca, and I'm the chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Immigration. Uh, before going any further, I want to introduce uh, the other members of this incredible new committee. This is uh, the, first, the first time we assemble as a committee, and I'm really looking forward to working with every one of you. Um, this is the beginning of a new session, but this is also an opportunity for us to kind of not only work together, but make sure that we're having good conversations as we move forward um, and really kind of think about, about your needs at the district level, um, but also for the city at large. Uh, from, uh, from Queens, we have here Councilmember Danny Drum. Uh, from Brooklyn, we have Councilmember Yeager. And from Bronx, we have Councilmember Joan I. And from Queens, we have Councilmember Holden. Uh, and we'll introduce other members as they come later. Today, the Immigration Committee will hear and vote on Resolution 182, which calls upon Congress to pass legislation introduced by the U.S. Representative Nidia Velasquez, which would permit Ravi Ragbir to pursue immigration relief so that he may stay in the country lawfully. Ravi is one of the New York's most passionate immigrant rights leaders, not just here in the city, but nationally. Despite his own immigration status being in jeopardy, he has always found ways to stand up for others, and now we are proud to stand up with him. As, as ICE engages in its unbridled immigration raids, a new and troubling trend has emerged. It seems as though ICE is targeting immigrant rights activists for deportation. That is not just happening here in the city, but across the country. This behavior is not only unacceptable, it's un-American. It is un-American because it is intended to intimidate those who are right now bravely speaking out against, against injustice, and we should all be concerned about any attack on our constitutional protections. Despite the uncertainty surrounding immigration policies nationwide, one thing is certain. New York City will not be shaken. We will tirelessly defend our immigrant communities to the full extent of the law, supported by the Constitution. So we will stand up to hate, and we will prevail every single time. So now um, I want to offer any uh, opportunities for um, yeah, so before we go, uh, do we have the resolution? Yeah. I just want to read the, the, the resolution for anyone at home that's listening. So this is resolution 182. Uh, the text here shows resolution calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign H.R. 4937, which would provide immigration relief for uh, Ravi. Rogbeer and denouncing the unlawful targeting of immigrant rights activists for deportation by the U.S. Customs, uh, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE. Uh, and first up to speak is Councilmember Danny Drum from Queens. Thank you very much, Chairman Chaka, for this opportunity to address this really important resolution which the Council is going to pass today. Uh, I have known Ravi Rajbir for about eight years since I first got elected to the City Council, and I can attest to uh, what a wonderful, good human being Ravi is and to the work that he has done. Uh, I uh, worked with him um, very early on in my tenure uh, on a forum on immigration at the Ethical Humanist Society, where I attended in, in that forum uh, with, along with the former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, before she was the speaker. Um, but I've also worked with him on a number of immigration issues, going back to when I was chair of this very committee. Uh, he is dedicated and committed to the immigrant community. Uh, Ravi uh, did have some difficulties in his life early on, uh, but he has certainly reformed his life and uh, turned his life around and has led an exemplary life uh, ever since, uh, like, over 20 years ago. Um, you know, I myself uh, have three arrests. I was arrested three times and was able to turn my life around. I'm 27 years clean and sober, and had I not been given uh, that opportunity by my constituents to serve, despite the fact that I had that in my past, I would not be sitting here today. So I'm a deep believer in people getting a second chance, a third chance even, fourth chance, whatever it takes. But uh, when people like Ravi stand up and support the rights of those who have less, like our immigrant communities, 
uh, I feel it's really important that we step up to the plate and support him. And of course, this is a bigger issue than just Ravi. This is an issue about immigrant leaders being targeted by an administration which attempts to silence those immigrant leaders uh, and, and their positions on, um, on uh, what's happening uh, with the Trump administration in Washington, D.C. So um, I'm very, very glad that um, we're hearing this uh, resolution. Uh, I'd like to ask that my name also be added to it. Um, and uh, I was also, uh, you know, really trying to make sure that this happened in time. Uh, and fortunately, Ravi got an extension of his um, deportation orders over the weekend. And so um, I look forward to uh, continuing to support Ravi and to continue to work on issues that this resolution addresses. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. Are there any other speakers on the docket? Okay, um, let's uh, go with Queens. Uh, Councilmember Holden. Uh, and, and I respect Council, Councilwoman Velasquez a lot. And um, the only thing I'm a little concerned here that I don't believe Ravi's been targeted. Um, first, uh, he committed ser a serious crime, a felony, while he was a guest of the United States to, to come here and work. Now, yes. Um, he may have turned his life around. He may be a good, good person right now. However, there's, there's victims here that need, and I, and I agree with Errol Lewis, by the way, and, and it, it kind of uh, opened my eyes, because I didn't know much about this case until I started reading the dockets. He had, I think, two appeals in the second and third courts, the appellate, and lost both, and, uh, and completely um, what, 21, he, 21 different times uh, he tried to put fraudulent um, mortgages through or actually succeeded. Now, if we're going to reward that and say we want to keep uh, people like this in the United States without restitution, I don't, I, the courts had demanded restitution. If somebody knows anything else, like th he was supposed to pay money back, um, did he do that? I don't know that. If this committee you know, can tell me he did, I might have a different opinion. However, if we're going to start using um, Ravi as our, our poster child for immigration reform, I think that's a mistake, and I agree with Errol Lewis. I, I never met the man. I'd, I'd like to. I, I asked the chair. I said if he can arrange that. But I think it's a little premature for me to act and to be in favor of a resolution that I think um, is not well thought out yet. I think we have to vet this, and I think we have to. the committee should do some research. And there's. Listen, teaching in the, in the uh, school system for 40 years in the college uh, and working with undocumented uh, immigrants, um, it, it was an experience. And I feel for their plight. And, and I helped a lot uh, of immigrants. I, I worked with uh, students who were very, very good students who had to only go home and sleep. They couldn't do work at home. And they had the deck sacked against them. and they. Uh, they are the ones that we should be protecting. Um, if somebody's committed a, a serious felony, $1.5 million worth of um, mortgages that he knew, Ravi knew quite well that this was wrong, multiple times. Yes, he turns his life around, but I don't think he's unfairly targeted. This has been going on since uh, early 2000s. He had case after case. Um, and I think to call committee meetings spur of the moment to work with legal teams, I, I think we need a little bit more vetting and a little bit more discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Holden. Any others? Uh, both, okay. Uh, Councilmember Joni from the Bronx. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have a statement that I want to read. As a son of immigrants and representative of the most diverse neighborhoods in New York City, I am sympathetic to the plight of those who come to this great country seeking a better life. I will fight for those facing wrongful deportation and work to ensure that New York City remains a fair city and supports the rights of dreamers to stay in the country that they call home. Chairman, fellow members, the reality, the reality is that Ravi Rigbar is not a dreamer. He is a criminal who defrauded innocent, hardworking New Yorkers. For those that will challenge me about paying their dues and second chances, for Ravi Rigbar, coming to this country was his second chance. This is not a vote against undocumented immigrants. This is a vote for the victims 
of Rigbar's crimes. We need to do everything we can to ensure that New York remains the world's safest big city. Thank you, Councilmember Joni. Councilmember Yeager from Brooklyn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and congratulations on our first committee. Uh, in addition to sh uh, sharing this seat uh, at this table with you, we share a large border of a district that we represent together, and I, looking for I look forward to doing great things with you, and I think we will. Um, I, I uh, you know, this is, uh, this is an interesting place that I find myself, because like many in the council, and like many in New York City, I'm the son of an immigrant. Um, uh, my father came here on a boat with his parents and his older brother, with the permission of our government, uh, a, a nation that welcomed my family with open arms. My mother's father uh, came to this country after escaping uh, Europe during World War II uh, with members of his school where they went to China and lived for several years in Shanghai until they were able to come to the United States. Again, our nation opening its arms to welcome an immigrant family that uh, was willing to come here promise to work hard, do right, uh, and be a part of the American fabric. Um, my father, the immigrant, uh, has four children. Three of us are attorneys. He is an attorney. His older brother has a son who's an attorney. Uh, we've committed ourselves in our lives uh, to supporting the Constitution of the State of New York. It's an oath I took long before I was uh, a member of this council and took an oath to support the Constitution. I took an oath. Uh, to support the Constitution as an officer of the court, as an officer of the state of the New York. So today we're here to talk about an individual. We're not here to talk about our DACA dreamers. We're not here to talk about uh, the wrongful, in my view, uh, uh, policies of the Trump administration on DACA. Uh, I believe firmly, and I've said this publicly, that this is not a country that throws life preservers to drowners only to yank it back as they were about to reach it. Uh, our nation um, uh, created a policy, whether we agree how it was created or not, to support the Dreamers uh, and created DACA, and the President uh, has tried to cut that down. I do not agree with that. I agree that those who came to this country as children, um, uh, brought here by their parents, who have lived their lives uh, lawfully and have supported our country and in many cases have even served in our military, should receive the welcome arms of the United States government and all of its people, and should be welcome to the fabric of the United States. But today we're here to talk about one individual, Mr. Ragbear. Mr. Ragbear is not a dreamer. Mr. Ragbear uh, perhaps would like to be a dreamer, but that's not what dreamers are. Dreamers come here and they do not break laws. That's the concept and that's the definition of a dreamer. A dreamer is somebody who lived his life lawfully in the United States, did not break laws, abided by our rules and regulations and the laws of our nation, and now submits him or herself to our nation and says, I'm here, can you help me stay and be a part of America? Mr. Ragbear is not that. Mr. Ragbear is somebody who committed crimes by his own admission, not somebody who, but for a roll of the dice, was convicted by a jury but agreed that he committed a series of crimes. And I wasn't there in the courtroom. All I know is what everybody else knows, what we've read. But the, you know, as, as Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Lewis is uh, getting an enormous amount of uh, press here uh, and, and mention at the council the last day or two, but uh, Errol Lewis, who I think uh, we all look as a voice of moral reason and moral conscience in the fabric of our city, uh, stated this uh, as eloquently as possible. He's not the guy, Mr. Ragbear, that we should be putting our efforts into helping beat unlawful and improper uh, 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 immigration policies in the United States. He's not that guy. And as my colleague from Queens, Mr. Holden, said, uh, he's not the poster child. He just isn't. Um, are there better poster children? Yes. But what I think that this does, this shines a spotlight on somebody who is a criminal. Now, he may be a reformed criminal, he may no longer have, be committing felonies on a regular basis, and I surely believe that he has reformed his life, but what we're doing here is we're playing into the hands of President Trump, who has made it very clear, in his view, anybody who comes to the United States is a criminal. That's not my view at all. I believe 
almost everybody who comes to the United States wishes to serve our country lawfully and properly, but Mr. Ragbeard did not. And so I'm not comfortable doing a one-man resolution, a one-person benefit to ask the Congress to itself do a one-person benefit to support a person who, in my view, is not deserving of the assistance of this council, is not deserving of the assistance of the Congress. Uh, as the court has said, uh, and he's been litigating this since, I believe, 2005 or 6, almost uh, 12, 13, 14 years, he has exhausted his legal options. And a court very recently said uh, that he has some sort of constitutional right to say goodbye. It is not my reading of the Constitution, but I support uh, and honor the members of the judiciary who find that interesting reading of the First Amendment. Uh, and now he has the right to say goodbye, and he should do that. And he should support those who will come after him to carry on his mantle. But not him, not me. I will not vote for this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much uh, to the members of the committee, and I want to open it up for a vote so we can move move through the next piece uh, or the next part of this hearing. I will say a couple things that's important. Um, one is I welcome all of these ideas. So I, I, I want to make sure to say thank you for, for bringing not just the discussion to this committee, but the context of which you're presenting these ideas. And so I welcome that. Um, and we need to do more of that, and we're going to, I think, see a lot more of this as we move forward. These issues on immigration are not only incredibly nuanced, um, there's a lot of information that we have to kind of look at together. And so I really hope and know that we're going we're gonna to commit to that conversation as we move forward on other issues. Um, I do want to say thank you. Every one of you brought your value of protecting immigrants in your districts. And I want to say thank you for that. That's, that's something that not only is, uh, I think, American, but it's a New York value. Uh, and we want to make sure that we continue to do that, not just as a committee, but as a council. We have a lot of power here, but we don't have federal power to make some of these changes at the federal level. But we do have the opportunities to make sure that we get resources to our neighborhoods. And so I want to continue to, 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 uh, to focus on that. Um, on the topic of, of Ravi himself and, and this resolution, again, I, I understand your, your um, opposition and discomfort and, and, the, and the arguments. There, there is something to be said about Ravi's case, who I've also, like Councilmember Drum, have followed over the last few years, not just in the work in our neighborhoods to create an incredible fabric of sanctuary within our, uh, within our faith leaders and from multiple faiths to create a, a real sanctuary in churches for people to walk into to get services. Robbie has been leading that. Um, yes, he has committed crimes. And so that's not something that um, is being shied away from or uh, we're not removing that from the conversation. This is all part of the conversation and why we are here, uh, why, he's, why he's in deportation proceedings possibly. The due process is where I'm going to just make sure to focus on. There, there are courts here that, that handle and that will continue to handle this case. Ravi has gone to all his check-ins. He's checked in with ICE at every time. Uh, he is go going through his court mechanisms to make sure he clears his name because he has that constitutional right and we're going to let him do that. And part of what this opportunity is going to be is for him to be able to do that before deportation. And so that, I think, is why I'm supporting this resolution, to ensure that the legal courts allow them to do their work under, under the, the promise of the Constitution and due process. So with that, uh, I want to I wanna ask the clerk to do the roll call for vote. And, uh, and I want to say thank you again for your conversation and discussion today. And I'm going to keep the vote open uh, for two members that are on their way. I just want to let everybody know that, too. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Immigration, Resolution 182, Chairman Chaka. I vote aye. Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. And uh, you'll have, uh, can we put two minutes on the clock for that? I want to make sure that 
that we, okay, go ahead, Dan. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, just to um, reiterate my position, um, I do believe that uh, Ravi should be given a second chance. I do believe that he um, has proven himself over the years. I do believe that uh, any attempt to deport Ravi also will divide his family. He's married to an American woman, and his deportation would have serious detrimental effects to that family. So uh, with that, I vote aye in favor of the resolution. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. Joan I. To explain my vote a little further, Chairman, I'm proud of my ethnicity and the immigrant family that legally immigrated to this country through Catholic charities and spent nearly a year in Italy before arriving here. I'm very fortunate to have been born in this great country, and I take none of that for granted. And the responsibilities that I have to this country, which has given so much back to me and my family. With that being said, I have to vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Holden, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, my wife is a Japanese-American immigrant. Uh, came to this country uh, post-World War II. Not a day didn't go by that she didn't experience prejudice. In, in our neighborhoods. She lived in Japan, lived in Germany. Only when she came to the United States in Queens did she experience the prejudice, overt prejudice, almost on a daily basis. Many of my family members are immigrants. So it's not, ag it's not against immigration. Uh, it's not against an individual. Uh, this is a clear-cut case where we need to look at the person. Did Ravi he might have done great work, and I want to hear more of it. I don't know enough about him. And like I said before, I never met him. Maybe if I did, I'd change my mind. But at this juncture, knowing what I know, what I read, our court system, he was given ample opportunities. Uh, and he exhausted them. Now he, he wants the city council, or the, the, the congressman wants the city council to vote, and we have to give him special treatment. I think if he made restitution, if he paid back the money, if he attempted to, or he did great work in the community, which he might have done, I don't see it yet. Um, for that reason, I'm voting no. Jaeger. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I have permission to explain my vote, sir? Yes. Thank you. Um, for the reasons I explained earlier, uh, during my remarks, and as the son of an immigrant, um, as the grandson of an immigrant, and as somebody who's had, uh, who's been given the privilege of walking these halls, and every day it's an incredible privilege uh, for those who have only been here for the 50 or so days, and for those who have been here several years before, uh, not a day goes by that I don't walk into this building and feel inspired in awe of the opportunity that I've been given. Um, I've been given the opportunity to take an oath, raise my right hand, and affirm my allegiance to the Constitution of the United States uh, as an officer of the court, as an officer of the state, and earlier this year as an officer of this city, as a member of this body. And that's an incredible privilege and it's an incredible honor. And in honor of that privilege and in honor of every single person who uh, is present in this great country who asks our government for permission to stay here and, permission, and for permission to be here and receives the, that permission. And in honor of all those who didn't have the opportunity to ask for that permission but are here now and are asking the government to set the record straight and to let them remain here because they came here as children and have abided their lives accordingly uh, as good people, as good, good potential citizens of the United States. In honor of them, I cast my vote uh, in opposition, uh, and I do that with great respect for those who have differing opinions. Thank you so much, Councilmember Yeager. And we're going to leave the vote open for the next 15 minutes uh, for. We're going to leave the vote open until the end of the hour at noon. And thank you so much.